Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed today, we're going over this pistol right here. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter. Now, a lot of folks have been anticipating this, asking Smith & Wesson for it, and they finally came through. So what's cool about 10 millimeter? Well, I guess sort of a long story short, the history of it is that it was developed after the 1980s FBI shootout where basically nine millimeter at the time failed to perform and it ended up costing some federal agents their lives. And the FBI went out and wanted a better caliber. That led to the development of 10 millimeter and Smith & Wesson, of course, back then made the most common 10 millimeter pistol for it. And then eventually some of the agents had a hard time controlling the recoil of it. So they downgraded it to 40 Smith & Wesson, which is essentially just a neck to down, or rather a shortened case of the 10 millimeter. So 40 Smith & Wesson was popular for about 15, 20 years. And nowadays nine millimeter has kind of taken that role back because of advancements in, in ammunition manufacturing. The good news is those same advancements also apply to current 10 millimeter loadings. So what you're getting here is going to be a pistol that is capable of doing a lot of different things, self-defense, hunting, recreational shooting, etc. cetera. So um, with that, I suppose we'll get into the details of the pistol, walk you through it tip to butt, and then at the end, we'll let you know how it's performed and what I think of it overall. Before we continue on, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is NAGR, the National Association for Gun Rights. Right now, they're giving away this very armored scout vehicle that I'm sitting in. Obviously, it's very cool. Obviously, they're out there uh, doing a good work every day to preserve our Second Amendment rights and get back the rights that we've lost over the years as well. Uh, if you want to sign up for the giveaway and support NAGR, there's a link down below in the video description. Again, thanks to them for sponsoring the video. Let's get on with it. I think I just lied to you. I said that we're going to go tip to butt. We're not. We're going to go butt to tip. So in order to do that, we're going to first uh, drop our magazine. We do have our magazine release button here. It is not ambidextrous. However, it is reversible. If you want to reverse it, you can do so and put it over here on the right side of the pistol. But we're just going to press that. Magazines drop free easily. They are metal magazines, 15 round standard capacity. Uh, Smith & Wesson marks their magazines by their followers. So that way, this one has obviously a yellow follower. If you have an M&P 45 mag, it's going to look identical except for the follower so that's an easy way to tell the difference of course it's also marked there up front now we're just going to make sure that our pistol is clear it is so we're free to go forward um, first off let's talk about the grip texture on there it's fantastic m p 2.0 grip texture is awesome um, but it really plays a role when it comes to 10 millimeter because it you really want to get a good grip on that gun and it definitely helps because of the recoil added recoil rather of the 10 millimeter round another thing that helps with that is a pretty low bore access m ps are pretty darn low and the beaver tail there will let you get up high on the pistol and the higher you can get of course the more manageable the recoil becomes um, it's definitely not a bruiser by any means but it definitely kicks more than say the m p 9 of course so uh, any little bit you can get to help control and manage that recoil i will take it we do have these little cutouts here on the bottom so that way if you get a double feed it makes it easier to strip and rip the magazine out of there that you may need to do additionally our grip size is interchangeable these little back straps so in order to do that you just twist this piece here on the bottom pull it out this is also a disassembly tool that we'll talk about here in just a second and then just pull out on your insert and it comes with four different inserts from small to large you can set it up however you want to fit your hand we have the medium one in there and uh, for me with large hands it's been fairly comfortable you guys can see how my grip goes on there it's definitely fits very very well uh, continuing on forward we do have our slide catch slide release that is ambidextrous as you can see and it does stick out a little bit. Uh, I was a little bit worried when I saw that, that I might accidentally bump it because I do that with some pistols um, that have a large slide catch uh, under recoil with that high thumbs grip. I've never done that with this pistol though. So good on them for that. It has good serrations on there. So that way, if you want to uh, use it to send the slide home, it's very, very easy to do so with that traction you get from the serrations. Uh, continuing on forward, we have our takedown lever that we'll talk about here in just a second when we go through disassembly. But of course, we want to talk about this trigger. So uh, M&P, the Shield Pluses, came out with those flat face triggers and a lot of people were saying, I wish they'd put those on the full size guns. Well, they have with the M&P 10 millimeter. So as you can see, we have this trigger safety here. If you don't press that, there's no way for the trigger to go home. Additionally, built into the frame, we have an over travel stop, which helps obviously eliminate over travel. So, the trigger press itself, you can see we have that take up there and then a wall and it breaks right at five and a half pounds on my scale. The reset. Okay. 
it's there, it's tactile, it's audible, it's not as strong as what you'd get with say like a Glock. That would be one of the few complaints I'm gonna have about that. I wish it was a little bit more tactile, a little bit more audible, but it's definitely not bad. And if you can't shoot this gun well, it's not the trigger's fault, it's the operator's fault. It definitely shoots very, very well. We got it loaded up with some hollow points and it's loaded 15 rounds in the mag and one in the chamber, just testing to see if it functions like that. Some guns don't, so we shall see. Continuing forward, you can see we have a 1913 rail on there with three different rail slots so you can set your light and laser up how you want to. It gives you a good bit of adjustability there. Obviously, this one here has the 4.6 inch barrel, so it sticks out a little bit in front of the dust cover. They also offer this with a four inch barrel. They also offer it with no thumb safety like we have here, and then also with a thumb safety. The thumb safety is ambidextrous if anybody is wondering. Over here on the right side of the pistol in the dust cover, we do have our serial number and it's a steel plate that's inserted in there. You can't get it out, even if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but if you wanted to, good luck with that. Uh, we do have good serrations up front if you want to do press checks and things like that. I know some guys are really into that. Um, additionally, the serrations at the rear are fantastic. They're sort of fist scaly, and it gives you a very positive grip on the, on the slide when running it. Our sights on all four models are going to be steel and our suppressor height sights. Uh, all of these M&P10s are optics ready, so it comes with their opt optics mounting system. This one, of course, is a prototype, actually. Uh, Holosun primary arms with their ACSS reticle on there, but it does fit on a Trigicon RMR mounting plate, and it comes with all the different mounting plates for all of your common optics out there. I don't know of any that wouldn't work with this particular system. Uh, some folks don't like optics mounting plates, but I think for the vast majority of people, you're never gonna have an issue with them, uh, particularly this one here, because the screws itself do go into the steel in the slide. Um, some of them out there don't have that, but this one does. And of course, it hasn't moved on me at all. It's held zero. We haven't had any issues. Getting into disassembly, first thing, of course, we're gonna make sure that we are clear. We'll walk our slide to the rear. It is clear. At this point, you can rotate our lever down and either send the slide home and press the trigger, or for folks that don't want to press the trigger for whatever reason, uh, you can remove your takedown tool here. And it's probably very difficult to see on camera, but there is a little sear disconnect lever in here. It's got that yellow paint on it. You can probably see it now a little bit better, but when you send that forward, it's the same thing as pressing the trigger. Obviously, like I said, it's a sear disconnect. It does the same thing. Uh, and then take out our guide rod. You can see there it is all steel, which I know a lot of folks dig. And then we have our barrel as well with a uh, polished feed ramp for feeding hollow points. The vast majority of rounds that have gone through this gun have actually been hollow points because that's just what I have in terms of 10 millimeter ammo, the most of it anyway. But the barrel is going to be nitride. It has that nice crown out there at the end. You can see some wear, but that's completely normal just for normal use. But the beauty of nitride finishing for folks that don't know is that it actually gives you uh, good corrosion resistance, uh, lubricity. And even if it's showing wear, it actually penetrates into the metal itself. So it's the properties are still there even on the worn spots. So reassembly, of course, is going to be the same thing in the opposite order. You'll note there that our um, striker and striker safety there are polished on there to help with the trigger pull. And then one thing that's nice about the M&P 2.0 series is going to be that we have added steel versus the early ones here and here. And what that does is it helps reduce the torque on the frame when it's firing, just makes it a little bit more controllable overall. But yeah, reassembly, same thing, just in opposite order. At this point in the video, we've discussed most of the important points about the pistol. One thing I left out is that the actual frame size itself is the same for the Smith & Wesson 2.0 45 series. So that way, holster availability is very, very good out there. Um, the one I've been using is from We The People Holsters. It fits it just fine. We'll drop a link if you guys are looking for it, as well as a discount code in the video description. But there's a ton of holster options out there if you're looking for that. So that's one thing that's good. A lot of times with new guns, that's an issue. Not the case here. Speaking of new guns, as of when I'm making this video, these have been sent out to folks like me for reviews, but right now they're not available for sale. I'm guessing that's going to change extremely shortly by the time you guys are watching this video. That may 
be the case and if so we'll have a link in the video description if you guys want to pick one up but right now the msrp depending on the model it varies but it's going to be in the mid 600 dollars range and street price of course is just going to vary depending on demand but for an optics ready pistol from a very reputable company like smith and wesson i think that's a perfectly fair price and in terms of performance how has mine performed well, accuracy has been phenomenal. Like I said, the vast majority of what we've put through it has been match grade hollow points, um, unfortunately for me, because those are more expensive, but it is what it is. And reliability, we put just over 400 rounds through this gun. It had one malfunction. It was with PMC, some FMJs. <laughs> malfunction, hollow point. Nope, FMJ. Other than that, it's been 100% reliable. One thing about 10 millimeter is that the loads are going to vary a lot in terms of power. There's some really hot 10 millimeter out there, and then there's some 10 millimeter that's actually less powerful than a lot of 40 Smith & Wesson rounds. Speaking of that, side note, for training, you can definitely fire 40 Smith & Wesson through this safely. I guarantee you in the manual it says not to do it. <laughs> you can do it. It'll be just fine. Your reliability might not be as good, but it will do so, and it will do so safely. Um, with that, I think that's all i have for you if you guys have any questions about the gun or anything like that you can always post down below in the comment section you can also post on my various social media sites that you see here on your screen uh, definitely check me out over on telegram if you're looking for deals it's a great place for that um, additionally if you haven't subscribed and you like this type of video this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the channel here i do a lot of videos like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you've done that and you've hit the notification bell and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel uh, you can sign up for my email list that you see on the website here on your screen that email goes out at most once a month and it just has all the videos since the last email went out so that way there's no algorithm censoring your eyes from my content additionally we have a daily deals email and as the name implies that email goes out every day and it has six or seven of the best deals that we find around the internet on guns and gear and if it goes out in that email it's the best price that i'm aware of at that time so that way it saves you guys some time so you don't have to do the looking and additionally it'll save you some money because i did the looking for you so there is that with that i think that's all i have for you Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.